Greetings, it is the Digital Dog again with a, another video tutorial covering soft proofing in Lightroom Beta 4. Uh, I wanted to cover a few points that I didn't go over in detail in my first video that's on my webpage talking about um, gamut warnings in the soft proof. So, with that said, let's move forward. I'm going to turn on my soft proofing by hitting the S key. And in this particular case, I've picked an image that deliberately has a lot of green in it because what I want to do is talk about the gamut overlays, um, specifically the monitor gamut overlay, show monitor gamut warning, which I'm hoping you can see has a blue overlay, and more specifically, the output gamut warning, which shows a red overlay. So currently, I have the image soft proofing to show me what this image would look like in sRGB. Um, note that when you're working with RGB working spaces like sRGB, Profoto, Color Match, Adobe RGB, it doesn't matter which one of these rendering intents you pick. There's absolutely no difference because these particular ICC profiles only have one rendering intent table, which is relative color metric. So uh, when you go ahead and look at a print profile, such as this Epson, that table has a perceptual table, and it has a relative color metric table, or an absolute color metric table. They're shared. And as you tab toggle back and forth, you will see a difference on screen. But for the exercise today, you will see no difference, so it doesn't really matter what we select. OK, let's talk first about, very quickly, about this monitor overlay, um, because I've learned a few things about it. Um, one of the things you'll notice, I'm going to turn it on, and I hope you can see that there's a little bit of blue showing up here in some of these folds. Not really easy to see against a green background. But as I toggle different profiles, nothing appears to really change in terms of the gamut overlay. We see the soft proof update, but we don't see the overlay change. And that is because, in this particular case, what we're comparing is the gamut of the display with the gamut of Melissa RGB, the internal RGB working space that is being processed when we work on our images. So it's a little strange. You would think that we would be comparing, in this case, the monitor gamut with sRGB, but we're not. So I'm not sure how useful this really is, because at this point, we're viewing the images that should appear in sRGB. We're seeing the histogram and the RGB numbers as they would appear in sRGB. But the gamut overlay has nothing to do with sRGB in this case. The gamut overlay is simply taking the monitor profile. Obviously, we need the monitor profile to compare the gamut of our monitor. But the other color space that's always being compared is the underlying color space used to process the image. So not sure how useful this really is. So I'm going to turn it off. Now, in this case, I'm going to hover over the output. And as you can see, there is a large amount of this green color that is now covered in red, showing us that the internal color space, the Melissa RGB color space, is very, very wide gamut. And as we look at what would clip if we were to convert to sRGB, we see a lot of these green colors, which makes sense because the major difference between, say, sRGB, Adobe RGB, and to a lesser degree, Profoto RGB, is the green, the gamut of the green. So what does this all mean? Some would have you believe that the solution here is to go in, turn this on, and then edit the file, edit a virtual copy, and attempt to reduce this overlay to get those colors into gamut. So I actually did do that. I made a virtual copy, which is here. It's loading. And I, what I did was I basically went into my HSL control and turned on the TAT tool and drag down the saturation. Now, what I'm going to do is toggle between the two, between the original and this edited version. And what I'd like you to pay attention to are the sliders, how they've changed. And you can see there's still a little bit of a red overlay. I haven't completely 
brought everything into gamut. But the idea as proposed is that what we want to do is we want to edit this image such that we bring all of this red into gamut. We, we, in other words, we remove the red overlay, bring the green into gamut. So I'm going to toggle back and forth. So here is the original image and you can see that these controls are all zeroed out. And here is the image after the edit. And now what we've done is we've basically brought that green into gamut. Now the question is, is this useful? Uh, one of the things people will tell you is, oh, when we take these very wide gamut spaces and we convert them from, in this case, Melissa RGB to sRGB, we see a change in color. And there is some truth to that. Uh, we, we have to make a larger color space fit into a smaller color space. But the question is, why don't we just convert this image to sRGB when we export it? And that's what I have over here in this particular image. This was exported directly out of Lightroom. All I did was tell Lightroom, export into sRGB and save the image to disk. I still have my overlay on and you can see there are still a few colors of red indicating that there is some uh, out of gamut colors in this particular rendition. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn off the overlay and I want you to look at these two iterations side by side. So on the left we have the image that I manually tweaked and then saved out into sRGB. And on the right, I have an image that I simply let the ICC profile do the gamut compression. And I'm going to click on both of them, hit the C key, and compare them side by side. Now, hopefully, you can see this. So here on the left is the image. I'll put on the I key so you can see. This was saved out. This is the original JPEG saved in sRGB. And on the right is the image that was tweaked. And what I basically see is that the image on the left looks better. I, I see a better rendition of the green color. The rest of the image really hasn't been changed because I didn't do anything with my HSL controls. This looks more muted to me. So what I'm trying to illustrate here is basically you can go in and you can worry about the fact that there's all this red overlay and you can go in and move sliders and try to reduce the red overlay. It's an awful lot of work um, for what I think is no gain. Basically, let the ICC profile do that gamut mapping. Let's take a quick comparison while we're here between the image, the original image, and the iteration. So what I'm going to do now, on the left side is the original wide gamut DNG file. And on the right, you're seeing the file that I exported as sRGB. And there's not a tremendous difference. We have reduced the color gamut of the green. And we did this very simply by exporting the file in sRGB, letting the color management system clip the out of gamut colors into gamut as close as they could. What I'm going to do is just toggle to the image where I did the manual editing that updates on the left side. So if we toggle back and forth, wide gamut, original. Now we've updated the manually edited sRGB image here. And we've been comparing it to the image where we just simply exported out sRGB. And yes, if we go back to the original wide gamut file, you can see that the green is more saturated. But it isn't a tremendous difference and we didn't have to do any work other than export the file and let the color management system convert to sRGB and handle the out of gamut colors. So my take is manually removing the red overlay using various tools is more work, takes more time, and does an inferior job. But this is certainly something that you might want to test out on your own. Okay, before we move on, I just want to make another point about the gamut overlay in terms of what you're actually seeing. Let's get out of the compare mode and go back into develop. Our soft proof is on and again we are working in sRGB. We hover over the gamut overlay and we see all these colors that are out of gamut. It's important to note that the overlay treats a color that's a tiny bit out of gamut and a color that's way out of gamut exactly the same in terms of giving you a fairly ugly solid red overlay. 
I thought it would be useful to take a look at this in more detail. We're going to go into a utility here called ColorThink Pro. What you're seeing is two color spaces plotted on top of each other of that actual image of the woman. I can actually plot the color gamut three-dimensionally of an image. So up here in my list, the black overlay is that image in sRGB and the image below it plotted in color is that image converted to Profoto RGB. And if I turn on sRGB, what you can see is in black its overall gamut compared to Profoto RGB. So all of the colors that we saw in red over the area of the woman's uh, top that was green that fall outside of gamut have this particular range in terms of falling out of gamut. As you can see, there are some colors out here that are very far out of gamut compared to colors that are very close to the sRGB gamut. So the red overlay basically treats those colors exactly the same. And as you can see here, as we twist this around in 3D, there are quite a few saturated colors that fall outside sRGB. All right, when we convert from Profoto, in this case to sRGB, all these colors are being remapped into this gamut. Uh, it's far more sophisticated in how this gamut mapping is done in terms of just taking uh, a sponge tool or using HSL controls and trying to map all this stuff in precisely. So this is another reason why I think the overlay, while very educational, isn't necessarily something that you want to be concerned with in terms of editing based on that overlay. Okay, back in Lightroom, what I want to do is get out of the compare mode, go back to my original DNG image that we have here. We'll go into develop. Our soft proof goes back on. It's sticky. So let's pick an output profile like my Epson 3880 using exhibition fiber. And then what I'm going to do is toggle back and forth between the two rendering intents, perceptual, relative. And I'm just going to select based on what I see on screen, I visually prefer. You really just have to do this image by image. So I'm going to stick, I like sort of the contrast I'm seeing with the relative color metric intent, and I'm just going to leave it that way. And now here's a really useful feature in Lightroom. If I hold down the Y key, I get a before and after preview. And what I can see is what the image looks like with the soft proof on. Here's my proof preview on the right side and what the image looks like without the soft proof on. And I'm not sure how well you'll be able to see this through through the web. There is a slight difference on screen. The image on the right is a little muddier in terms of contrast simply because we have our simulate checkboxes on. We're going through the profile. So at this point what we can do is we could go into our basic and we could come in here and try to adjust the image on the right so it better matches the image on the left. And these again are going to be output specific tweaks because we have our virtual copy in, in, in effect here. So I could come in here and I could up the contrast a little. This is very, very subtle. I'm going to go ahead and make my, my proof, create proof copy because I'm starting to edit this file. So now these tweaks are going to be baked into that virtual copy. We'll give it a chance to update. Okay, so that's a bit too much. Let's come back a little and maybe bring the exposure up a tiny bit. The idea here basically is that we want to make the image on the right better match the image on the left. And when we've done that, what we're able to do is now go into our print module and make a print with these output specific tweaks for this profile with this rendering intent and we should have a print that better matches the original on the left side. One thing I do want to mention is that if you do go into the print module and you load a template for this output profile, if we've already had one built, you don't have to worry about setting the rendering intent. The virtual copy will print using the rendering intent that you've selected here. So all I have to really do is go into my print module and pick a template 
that's already been pre-built. I don't have one, but I, I could easily build one. And the point I'm trying to make is that down here, you'll notice that we can pick a relative or perceptual rendering intent. If we are using a virtual copy that has been soft proofed, that rendering intent will override what we set here. So this is very useful if you're ganging up a bunch of images, for example, on a page, each one of those images will print using the rendering intent that you selected back here in the develop module. So that's a really useful feature. You don't really have to remember what you used. Lightroom will remember it for you. Well, that is the conclusion of this tutorial. I hope you got something out of it and I thank you for watching it.